Hello everyone, it's me again, Kathleen from Zen Art. Uh, before we start, I'll be sharing with you um, a link to our um, free watercolor mixing guide. So if you want to check out what's in there, please just click the link that I'm sharing below in the comments. So um, you'll see here behind me, these are the sort of things that will be there in the mixing guide. So um, it'll show you how you can mix your colors, uh, what to do with your new palette, for example, how to swatch out the colors and see how your colors mix and record them in a chart so that um, at any time you need a specific color, then you know how to mix them. And you also know which reds or blues or yellows to mix together to create uh, vibrant purples or more muted purples. Okay, so um, check out our free watercolor mixing guide, which I link below. Hello again, Vivian. Thanks for joining. Okay, so um, today we'll be drawing. Um, I will be painting using the prompt memory. So today's prompt is memory. And I chose uh, muffins as my um, theme for today. Uh, because um, when I, whenever I eat a muffin, I remember my grandmother because she was the one who taught me how to bake since I was a little kid. So um, what memories, um, what fond memories do you have? What what comes to your mind when you think of the word memory? So it's different from all for all of us. So uh, let me know what uh, comes into mind for you. But for me, it's uh, one of them is um, usually muffins. It's food related, even if you just smell it, right? So smells uh, really evoke um, deep memories in us. Okay, so here is the reference photo I'll be using. Okay, so yummy muffins. Okay, and I share this here in the event. So if you want to paint it later or now, then you can um, you can save it and have that as your reference photo. You can all use also use your own if you prefer. Okay, so I'm not sure if I linked it. Did I link it? Okay. Anyway, um, if I didn't properly link the free watercolor mixing guide from Zen Art, I'll do it again later after. Okay, so before we start, I'm gonna flip my camera. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, there you go. And then I'm gonna. Okay, so before we start, okay, again, I have my reference photo here and I'll keep it to the side. And then you need your watercolor. Okay, so whatever paints you have. This is the Allegro set, Allegro palette from Zen Art. So this has 24 um, half pans, so 24 colors of half pans. So you get a lot of colors in this nice, neat package. Hello, Alexina. Hi, thanks for joining. And then um, it's also, you know, it's very easy to um, bring along. And then uh, these are the colors. So Allegro has um, the more vibrant and warm colors. So this is usually the palette I get when I'm painting um, florals because um, it has all the beautiful warm colors, okay? And it has a splash guard to keep it safe. Okay, so these are the colors. I'll keep it here. Next, um, we also need our brushes. So I have mine here in a jar. I just like to keep it here so that it's anytime I need to use a different brush, it's handy. But this this set is um, all these brushes. There are 13 and the palette knife. Um, these are from our, our Turner collection. So this collection actually comes in a neat 
case. So if you want to bring it along for plein air or for traveling, it comes with this case and it will keep your brushes safe. All right, and you also need your um, water. Okay, so I have a huge jar of water so that I don't have to keep changing. But remember, um, if you start to uh, see it getting dirty, then uh, change it because it will affect your mixtures. And next, um, if you haven't drawn yet, then of course you need your, or your pencil and you need an eraser. But I already have, I've pre-drawn already the muffins, as you can see. Okay, and then, um, but I'll have this eraser handy because I'm going to dab at it before painting so that I can remove some of the darker um, sketches. Next, um, let's see, I forgot to get my mixing plate, so I'll run for a short bit. Okay, I'm back, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to get, I washed it, so it was drying in the dish rack. All right, so um, you need your mixing plate. Um, if you have a palette that comes with the mixing plate, then okay, you don't need an extra, but it's up to you. Okay, I, I prefer to have an extra so that I can um, easily clean it. Okay, so I'll set it here. Then you also, I also like to have a scrap paper because I like to, um, test out my mixtures before I, I use it so that I can see if, if I really like it. Sometimes when you mix it here, you feel like it's okay, but then when you, you swatch it on your paper, you're like, oops, so uh, maybe it's too yellow or it's red or whatever. So it's also nice to have a scrap paper to, to swatch your mixtures. And then you need your um, paper towel or your sponge or tissue or whatever. Um, you prefer as your absorbent um, material so you can use this to to lift off paint or you can use uh, and you can use this to remove excess um, water and pigment from your um, brushes okay so I like to keep it near my water and my mixing plate so I can just easily go back and forth all right so let's see do we have everything so before we start, you just check if you have everything because you don't want to keep running back and forth like I did. All right, so I think we're ready to start. So with your reference, um, my reference here where I can easily see it. So when I look at my reference photo, um, I will first take a look at what is the lightest color that I need to apply. And I'm going to use a bigger brush for that. So this is a uh, number 10 round brush. So I'm gonna use a round brush for that and apply a very light wash of yellow. Okay, so I also like to have uh, the swatch of my set handy so I can see um, easily which, which colors I really want to use. So for example, for this, I'm gonna use the yellow deep, but very washed out. So I'm going to prepare the mixture first here on my mixing plate. Okay, I'm going to dilute this yellow deep. Okay, I think that's not too great. I probably did not wash my brush too well, so make sure to, brush, to wash your brush so that it doesn't affect your color. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Okay, that's better. So with a light wash, I'm going to check if it's the lightness that I, I like. Okay, that's perfect. So just a light yellow wash. Okay, so that, that will be my first layer. So I'm going to apply it in the, the two muffins down here because um, they're just a nice golden brown. So I'm going to zoom in so you can, you can see it nearer. Okay, and then I'm going to move it okay there you go so now i'll start with the two muffins down here All right so i'm going to apply a thin yellow wash over. so remember uh, with watercolor the tendency is that it will dry lighter 
Okay, so sometimes if you feel like um, it's a bit too vibrant, um, don't stress yet because once it dries up, it's going to lighten a bit. Okay. So this muffin has al almonds in it. So I'm going to try not to cover that. I want to keep it lighter. Okay, so just a general rough wash. So my goal here is not to make it smooth because um, these are muffins and you actually want the texture. You, you want to have the texture that your brush strokes create and keep them because uh, muffins aren't smooth, right? They, when, when they bake, they break apart and they stretch and that's what makes them beautiful. Now I'm gonna go to the next one. Okay, so just quickly go over. All right, so I'm also gonna go here because when you bake, um, it's really lighter here, but the color that you see here will also be um, shown here, just a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water and tone down the, the wash. And also go over here for the shadows. So if you're making baking a, a chocolate muffin, for example, this is gonna be a, a darker brown. But since this is uh, pretty light, I'm also going to do this lightly. Okay, so I'm just using it in the lower bottom. Because I want to keep the upper parts um, lighter. Okay, so now that I have that, then I can also start with the brown one okay the brown muffin chocolate muffin okay so for that i'm gonna use um burnt shenna but um wash okay just a thin wash okay so i want i want to have some um, bright color but just a light wash underneath it's gonna help uh, give depth to the, the brown of the muffin not make it too flat Okay, so it, it looks like it's, you know, kind of orangey, but that's fine. This, you're, this is the first layer, and it's going to be light. So I'm going to get that. Okay, again, I'm going to check if I like it. And don't, don't stress out about making your work the same as the reference photo. Okay, so it's just your reference. You can totally make it your own. Okay, do whatever you want personalize it okay, again just like the two yellows here just a light wash so I'm working around because um, I want the paper to dry up as I move around because I want to keep the texture I want to see the rough brush strokes the rough edges because I'm making muffins and I want the texture so now we're going to be doing a lot of layers, okay? So um, it's fun and um, just take your time. So next, um, we have the this muffin. Let's go back to these two, okay? So again, with this deep yellow, okay? With the deep yellow, I'm going to mix some burnt shenna, okay? Make it a little bit golden. So like a golden orange okay so I'm gonna test is it too light is it too dark maybe okay I like it all right so I'm gonna go over this again in rough patches okay so the goal again my goal is not to create like a smooth blend okay so if you want to switch to a smaller brush go ahead okay now uh, with me I just um, tilt the brush 
more vertical so that I can just use the tip. Okay. So I'm applying it. So you want this nice golden color when you're painting muffins because, you know, that's the perfect baking time, right? When it starts to turn gold, then you know that it's cooked. It's properly baked. Okay, so I do this in like um, circular haphazard motions. So this is um, like the scumbling that you would also use when you when you paint in oil. Okay, so it creates this texture, nice texture that you want. Okay, so I just try to take a look at my reference and see where the cracks are and I try to to create to put the darker shadows there where I can see the cracks are especially but remember we're gonna keep layering so you're not gonna get the final look right now okay so just keep working keep working at it okay and then I go to the next one now um, same same mixture because they're quite similar in color Okay, and again, I'm gonna do the rough Rough strokes Okay, so you want this texture So don't stress about making it smooth Okay, so I'm already running out of the mixture. So remember, um, when you mix certain colors and you see how much you need to use them for, um, try to prepare more than you need so you don't run out because it's hard to um, copy exactly the colors, even the, the vibrancy. Okay, so again, I'm gonna wait for that to wait for these two to dry and move to my next one to the brown muffin to the chocolate muffin next I'm gonna I'm gonna now mix um, burnt chenna with um, burnt umber okay so I like to make uh, a more yummy more vibrant chocolate muffin so up to you what uh, kind of brown you want in my case, I want a more vibrant brown, so this is my choice. So experiment with the paints that you have and swatch it out, okay? That's why it's so good to have a, a scrap paper on the side to swatch out your mixtures so you can see if, if you like what you mixed or if you want to make a new mixture, okay? So remember, the more paints that you mix in together, um, the muddier it gets especially if you add white so as much as you can don't um, use white to lighten use water to lighten your mixture because white will easily muddy up white is more opaque so that's why it, it makes it muddier hello sorry i haven't checked the messages hello laura and ashley hi everyone okay so i'm going to continue and just uh, I'll keep checking so if you have any questions uh, please ask okay so I'm mixing burnt umber now okay and now I like this brown but again I'm gonna see if um, it's a nice sh okay I like it it's a nice shape it's like chocolate right so I'm gonna use that here again uh, I'm gonna do the scumbling so that I have a rougher texture Okay. I'm trying not to to overlap the other muffins keep them apart so if you don't want your sketch to be visible when you finish painting your work um, don't forget to um, erase them you know you can you can erase already before you start so I'm going to go over that quickly. 
then continue with my rough strokes okay then this part will be a bit lighter because this is where the, the source of light hits the most so I'm gonna try to lift some of the color off so you can use your your paper towel or your tissue for this or your sponge or like me just you can just use your brush okay. uh, yes actually you can you can also use um, some people use some um, uh, like plastic or other um, things that have texture and dab on it then you can um, you can also get a rough sort of mixture a rough effect so for example a sponge then you can you can use a sponge to just like create dabbing motions like this and it also creates a rough kind of um, effect okay a texture but uh, try it out first and see if it's the rough texture that you want or not so I like to use the brush strokes because it looks rough but it's not um, it's not like it has sharp edges but smoother so um, try out and then I also have an article about that like the different watercolor techniques so um, just check out on our website under toolkits it's called watercolor um, painting techniques and there are many ways there that I, I showed and there's a video so you can check out um, which ones are interesting for you uh, there's also using salt using alcohol using plastic using bubble wrap all sorts of things so please check it out okay so um, if you also want to um, have like a softer softer way of removing color then you can you know you can use your paper and then you can just like lift out the color like that and it also creates a, a softer kind of texture okay so next okay so waiting for things to dry are they dry okay so me sometimes um, if i'm too impatient i would use a blow dryer which i did the last time in the reflection um, live so feel free to do that too if you're not um, worried about some of the texture getting lost okay so if i'm doing like nice washes that i want to bloom naturally i won't use it because i want the, the blooming to happen naturally but if you're just waiting for like flat washes to dry then yes go ahead use your blow dryer all right so next um i'm gonna ag again add um a deeper layer now same mixture um, with a deep yellow and the burnt chenna okay so it's like a, a golden brown so i like i like to use the yellow the deep yellow for that because um creates a nice rich brown so that's why I try to experiment with with your different yellows and see how how they would mix with other colors because uh, they give you different um, vibrancies different saturations okay so now I'm gonna add more pigment because uh, I want it darker I'm in the third layer now and then I'm gonna add marchena like I did earlier Okay, so I think I want to add a little bit more yellow. Okay, there. It's a nice golden brown. And again, with my handy swatch paper, I'm going to check. Okay, maybe it's too yellow. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt. So just take your time and try to get your mixes right because you don't want to regret it later. Okay. So I'm gonna swatch it again to see. Okay, I like this better. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit less um, yellow. All right. So now I'm gonna add the next layer. I'm gonna change brushes actually. So I want smaller scumbling now. So let's try with this round brush. I think this is number six. Okay, so it's a good size. It's like your mid mid-sized round brush so sizes four to six are great for a middle middle size brush okay. 
So I'm going to add another layer now. So you want to keep this nice golden edges because really it's it's what makes the uh, the muffin look um, delicious. Like there's a little bit of crunch on the outside and then when you bite it's soft and moist inside. Okay. So here I'm going to try to do some lifting in some parts. Okay, so I'm trying to, to paint around the, the almonds. So I'm going to do that later. I want to keep it just light now so I have time to work on it later. Okay, so keep checking your reference so that you can see if, you know, maybe you're deviating too much or you're just creating your own and you like it anyway. Okay, sometimes you have happy accidents. So don't be afraid to experiment as well. Okay, so don't forget to check out our color mixing guide. It's free and it has um, all the things, all the details that you need there for how to mix your watercolors. Okay, so I'm trying to pay attention to where the, the cracks are. Later on, I'm going to apply a darker mix to that. So for now, I'm just focusing on the browning when it has baked, the beautiful browning. Okay, so you want, you want to have the cracks and you want to fill them in later because, you know, that's what gives muffins their muffin appearance. Okay, so who here likes to bake? And what do you like to bake the most? Okay, using the same mixture, I'm going to go and um, paint this as well. Okay, so I'm going to do the raisins later because that's a different color. For now, I'm focusing on the yellows and browns, golden browns. So this actually looks like rust. So sometimes um, there are paints with that color, like rust. So I guess you can, you can try using that, mixing it with some yellow. Okay, but in the case of our, our Allegro set, you can just totally mix the colors that you need because you have 24, 24 beautiful colors to choose from. <laughs> wow, really, Beatrice? I didn't know that. You love to bake. Good to know. And cakes. Okay, I'm too afraid to bake cakes. I bake um, breads and um, loaves and muffins. So... That's what I like to bake. I love breads because really it makes when you smell the the scent of baking bread, it's so delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm already adding shadow around the the raisins. Okay, this you know it's um, it looks like it's embedded or. Um, covered around with a with a dough. Okay, so again, try to add texture. Okay, don't stress, just you know, circular motions. Wow, really, Alexina? Wow. Okay, so um what do you call that? You you had uh, your own cake king, cake making and decorating business. Gosh. 
that's a lot of work <laughs> i'm just i'm too afraid to make to bake cakes but i i'm actually interested to bake one just to see how i would enjoy the decorating part but yeah good okay so i'm gonna add a little bit here and there make darken some parts that i like that i see more shadow You can do it, B. You can bake bread. <laughs> it's quite fulfilling. But yeah, when I first made it, I was stressing out about uh, will my dough rise or will it be too hard and things like that. But yeah. Okay. So I think um, okay, I'm, I'm okay with this layer. Okay. So as you can see, um, it starts to look more uh, real now. It's uh, starting to have depth so don't judge your work even before it's finished okay things will come together the, the more that your layers um, keep adding oh no that's true <laughs> sometimes it's uh, ha the people that makes it hard yeah <laughs> okay so next um let's see uh, okay i'm gonna go here now because i like i mentioned earlier i'm giving each each uh, muffin time to dry so i'm gonna go with a um with a chocolate now okay so again i'm using the same um mixture that i used for the second layer but now with more pigment so uh more saturated so again i used um burnt shanna and burnt umber so they make a really nice beautiful um brown so I'm gonna add more water. Okay, so remember, try to keep, uh, try to make extra to your mixture so you don't run out and regret it. Wow, really? Decorations that look like food? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> food is so nice to paint. It, it also makes you hungry. So after this, I'm also gonna eat something. So here in the Philippines, it's uh, 11 p.m. Quite late, but I'm a night owl. I love the I love the late hours, and I also usually bake um, during this time from midnight onwards. Okay, so burnt shanna and burnt umber. Okay. And then I try to see if um, it's dark enough. Okay, so it's darker, I like it. Okay, so I can use it now. So even before you start this, you can already swatch out, you know, colors that you're gonna use. So you can see your palette. You can prepare and um, see if you like how your colors look next to each other, even how you can already start layering them as well to see how they would look like layered. So you can, you can totally prepare for your work if you're um, worried that you're not gonna get the colors right so you can you can do this uh, before you work on your main um, artwork okay so again I'm gonna start on the edges because the light is here so I want to keep this lighter okay so this is really about layering so that you have more you create more depth and you want you want the layers to just beautifully um, blend together later on so you don't you don't blend and paint them while you're painting but instead um, you layer and they will just magically just blend after so it's it's your eye that does the blending 4 p.m. okay <laughs> wow you have chicken on oh my gosh I'm just gonna have a sandwich I'm envious. <laughs> I bet that smells great. <laughs> okay, so I actually regret not drawing this part darker, so I'm not sure now where the, the chips are. So also think about that when you're when you're painting. Okay, but also try not to stress. Like if you don't see, okay, just you know, wing it later. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, I think it's really more important that you, you enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, you know you're not gonna keep doing it so 
like me i realized i drew too lightly so <laughs> i'm gonna totally wing the the chips later on but that's okay <laughs> okay all right so now it's starting to look like they're um, not just flat but actual cup um, muffins okay so that's great i'm gonna add shadows here and there because around the the chips there will be shadowing okay some of them are embedded some of them are on top so okay so don't worry anything that uh, you want to add more later you can just uh, mix again okay so let's see it's so oh, okay this is pretty dry so again another layer okay so i'm gonna add more of the mixture and i I already switched the smaller brush so I can have more control over it. Okay, and then adding more pigment just to make it darker. Okay, so basically my, my layers are from 2 to 4 are just the same mix. But just with more pigment. Okay, so just try to just see if you like it. Like I'm very paranoid that way, so <laughs> I keep trying to check. So up to you if you're more confident and you just want to paint directly and just adjust while it, when it's there. Then yeah, you can totally do that. Okay, so now I'm going to again add this next layer. Okay. So I'm now concentrating on the edges. Okay. I'm now working more in more detail. The shadows. See how it looks like. So I try to keep the texture going. Okay, so take your time, okay? Anyway, you're doing this by layers, so there's no pressure for you to, to work on it immediately. Okay, take your time. Now I'm also adding the shadows around the almonds. Okay, working on those cracks. So if you just want to feather the edges, then just um, rinse your brush and with a damp brush, just feather the edges like this. Okay. So you still have the texture, but it's, it's softer, so you can do that. Okay. So just with a wet, damp, wet brush, you can um, soften the edges, but still keep the texture. So don't stress about making it exactly the same as your reference. Your reference is just um, there to guide you, okay? We're not creating portraits, so muffins don't come in one, in one um, look. Each one differs from even if it's the same batch. So you actually want them to, you know, look different from each other. Makes it more real. Okay, so if you if you're a baker and you just bake something, take a photo and you can totally use the that as your reference later on. Okay, now I'm again I'm here on the edges, creating that um, browning that we like. Okay, and now I'm gonna go and remove some. Okay, I'm gonna do some color lifting just to create that extra texture. Okay, so here and there. 
So just keep wiping it off on your um, on your paper towel. Okay, so you can see my paper towel is quite soaked already. Okay, so next let's move to the next one here. Wait for this to dry. So as you can see, it's really layering and layering and trying to achieve um, the beautiful texture and the beautiful browning that we get when we bake. Okay, so I made this one a bit lighter than this. Because uh, based on our reference, it's also a bit lighter. Okay, I'm working around. So working from the edges, moving in, trying to maintain the texture. Okay, so this is how you can you can do it without being too um, realistic about it, but still get the essence of the muffins. Okay, putting some shadow around the the raisins for later. So what's uh, what's your favorite yellow when you when you paint? People have their own preferences, like the yellows that they like to use, that they you know veer towards whenever they're painting. For me, I like the Hansa yellows and the cadmium yellows. And for the cooler yellow, I like the ye lemon yellow. Okay, so I'm going to add extra here because this is where the two bump against each other. So it's going to be more shadowed. Okay. And then also a little bit more on the cracks. So I'm also adding like dot dotting. So try to see where the most cracks are and try to mimic them. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the chocolate. Lime yellow. Oh yes, that's a good one too. <laughs> and also, of course, the different yellows that you use also create different mixtures, different effects. So it's really fun to play around with them. Okay, let's go to the brown. So now I'm gonna, I still have a lot of the, the mixture from before. So I'm gonna get some of that. Okay. And then add a bit more, um, make it a bit deeper. Okay, so I'm gonna add an ex extra um, burnt umber. Okay, so burnt umber and, and um, brown ochre look near to each other color wise but th this one is a more a cooler and deeper shade okay so the browns that you use also affect um, your mixtures so experiment with um, how it affects your your mixtures okay so it's always about um, experimenting and trying it out for yourself so then you can see how your your paints behave, how they mix with each other. Okay. So again, I'm gonna add the like, texture now because this is darker. Okay. And especially here around the where it bumps against this muffin. OK, 
Okay. There you go. And I'm going to keep it like that for now. Okay, so now um, I'm going to be in the in the more um, shadowed. But uh, before I forget, um, I'm going to work down here on the line on the liners, the cupcake liners or muffin liners. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use this mixture of the deep yellow and the burnt chenna. Okay, but I'm going to wash it down. See? Okay, that's pretty light. A little bit water. Okay. So I'm going to add the shadows. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this handy because I will need to remove um, if it's too dark. Okay, so this is just the first layer here, so you can still add later if you want to make it darker, especially um, at the bottom part. So once you start working on this as well, it's uh, going to start to come together. So I'm working on the creases, okay, because that's where most of the shadow will be. Okay, so just um, keep checking to see if you're working on the right areas or not. And if you're like me and you made a mistake, just you can still fix it, okay? Don't stress. You can still lift the color off. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next one and using the same mixture, just uh, thinned out. Okay, You just need to thin down the same mixture. Okay, and slowly work towards the shadowing that you see okay don't worry you can still add more layers so you don't have to get everything now just think about how you would layer them okay so if you spill some just lift it off just think about how you would layer them Okay, and oh, I forgot this part. Okay, so that's like a deep brown. So I'm gonna use the deep one that I did before. Okay, there's a shadow here. There you go. So you can still see that it's liner peek through. Okay, so now this is uh, pretty dry. Not as dry as I would normally want, but. I can work on that. Okay, so I'm going to add um, more burnt shanna to the mixture to the side. And then I'm going to add the, the extra details now. So I'm going to work on the cracks, add it here and there. You can always make it darker if you want the cracks to be darker. Okay, it's up to you how you would like to um, interpret it. So 
so it's a personal choice as well right each each of our works are our own like interpretations of how we would like to see things or how we see things actually that's why it's also very interesting when you you're all in one room and you try to draw the same the same still life or the same um, person and it's so, so interesting to see the different interpretations that each artist has I love it so again I'm working on the cracks now in more detail as well as the burnt edges well, not burnt but browning of the edges okay. then I try to add extra texture here and there Okay, so this part is actually very therapeutic. You're already starting to see the final look of your work. So, what's your favorite muffin? If you have, if you can choose, or if you go to a coffee shop and you buy one, what do you usually get? Okay, I'm going over the cracks a little bit just to create like an extra shadowing. Okay, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the almonds. Okay, so I'm gonna thin down this this mixture. And just start on the edges. Lemon or raspberry with white chocolate chips. Wow. <laughs> I like the sound of lemon. It's very refreshing. I like um, banana muffins and uh, blueberry muffins. I love those. But lemon sounds great. I just don't usually find it here at the coffee shops but I would love for them to offer offer that um, kind of muffin okay so there you go now uh, I'm gonna go down here okay oh wait I haven't finished the almonds okay <laughs> finish the almonds first okay so this is just like the first layer of the almonds okay so don't um you can still work on it later okay and then i'm gonna head down here and add another layer okay just to deepen this Okay, so find out where the darkest shadows are and try to try to work on that. Okay, but again, it's uh, layering, so don't don't be worried if you don't get it immediately. Lemon curd in them. <laughs> okay, that sounds even better. Oh my gosh, I was just like actually thinking of a plain a plain um yeah lemon muffin but um with a yellow curd sounds i lemon sorry with the lemon curd in them it sounds even better 
Okay. So again, work on your shadows. Okay. So take your time, okay? Um, you won't really immediately get the, the results that you want to see in just um, one layer if you're doing the layering. And I, I'm doing the layering now because um, I want to see the, the texture. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go to the next one and do that as well down here. Okay, so I'm trying to keep the whites um, crisp and nice looking so that um, it creates a contrast. So that you will see the, where the creases are. And you want to keep those. Okay. So now it's starting to look like they're actually muffins. Okay, so I hope you um, try to make your version of this. You can of course choose your own reference photo if you prefer if you have one of yours if you took photos of your baked goods then yeah and please do share it with us we love to see your your own take on things and um, it's world watercolor month this is a palette you're using um, what do you mean uh, this is the Allegro palette from Zen Art, yeah, this is one of our new, yes, <laughs> this is Zen Art too. This is our new paint, these are our new paints. These actually come in uh, four different sets, two main sets, the Allegro with the warmer colors and Sereno with the um, cooler colors. This is Sereno. So these are the colors. So for example, for if you're painting landscapes and such then this would be a good choice and for florals and brighter brighter more vibrant warm subjects than this one and um, my personal favorite is the espresso because it's it's small but it has not 12 nice colors and uh, it's really it's really tiny that you can bring it every day with you so it's uh, very handy and nifty and we have another one that's um, also very beautiful the prezioso so these are the metallics so if you're if you like to paint uh, metallics in metallics here is the swatch fit so it's you can't really see it clearly now but in person it's really very beautiful all the metallics you'll need i love it um, as you can see, my personal favorites, the gold and the bronze, but uh, the pink gold is also very beautiful. So, and it even has rusted iron. So, now I'll continue with, um, so for example, based on the reference photo, um, this part is actually like more brown, darker, but I, I want this to be more vibrant and yummy um, watercolor painting. So. I changed it so you can also make changes like that okay so explore away and be adventurous and try out things I'm sure you will you'll you know find your own voice your own style it's the best way to find that out so experiment okay so next um, uh, here with the what do you call this with the chocolate cup muffin I'm gonna do some color lifting okay I want it to have more texture before I, I start putting extra detail okay so you can do this with your brush you can do this with your um, with your cotton buds or with your paper towel okay so you can you can use just make sure they're clean so that you don't 
you know you don't uh, make it dirty with whatever is on the material that you're using so you can just wet the parts where you want to lift off some color and then you can dab your um, paper towel on it and you can lift some off okay so I like it because it also creates a uh, like a soft kind of lifting okay so now uh, I'm gonna work on the shadow right there before I forget here in between so there's you can see a little bit of the lining peeking through so it's such a tiny space that I'm just gonna cover it now before I forget so I can also see some of the creases so I'm gonna make this really dark so I just like dab direct my brush directly on the on the pan okay so there all right I like it looks great okay so next um, I'm gonna work on the almonds okay so I'm gonna just dab directly here okay and then add the detail So it's like I'm I'm sketching it out with with watercolor, just around. Okay, so depending on your on your style, you may mo may want to use more muted yellows and stuff like that. Then go ahead, okay? So this is just my my way of my preference of doing things. I do like to paint in more vibrant colors. So whatever your preference is, um, just go ahead, go ahead and do that, okay? Do you? Okay, I'm just here to like show you you know what textures you can make what layering can do okay don't forget to um, click the link to our free watercolor mixing guide okay so that you can you can have um, extra guides on how you can mix your colors it's a great um, guide to especially if you have a new set because then you can test it out and see. Okay. And we also used our new mixing sets to to test out the the different uh, mixtures there, so you can see how they work. You can check them out. Okay. So I'm just now using um, burnt shana directly to create deeper shadows. here and there okay I'm also gonna add extra here the edges okay. so just to to define I like to do this um, technique the the lining but not completely okay just here and there just um, little suggestions okay so I'm gonna add more the final texture now so I'm doing more of a, of a dry brush um, application so I can keep um, 
more of the texture. So as you can see, um, this is how I, I paint my muffins, a more golden, yellowy, yummy version than the reference. So feel free to create your own, okay? And please do share with me. Share on the Painting Inspiration Daily, okay? I'd love for you to share your own creations, your own masterpieces. Okay, don't don't worry about oh I, I'm you know don't think I got it all right and stuff like that. Oh, well, I don't get them right either. So so let's just share our our own versions because I really love it. I love to see um, how you do yours. Okay, so this is almost finished. I'm just going to deepen the shadows here and there, especially this part with a um, bigger crease and here too. Okay, so our eyes see things differently and that's what makes our, our work special and different from each other. Okay, so I'm going to move here now and now it's time to work on the raisins. So I'm going to mix that. Okay, so it's like a purpley, purpley brown. So I need some purple in it. So I'm going to use um, here, this violet. Here it looks kind of black, but it's actually a deep violet. Okay, let's see how that looks like with my handy swatch. Okay, it's a nice deep shade. I don't even have to like mix anything to it. Okay, so I'm going to do that now and use it here. So this is the first layer, so I'm still going to add to it later. Okay, trying to keep that shape. Okay, and there's another one here. Okay. So that's it for the first layer. Let's wait for that to dry so we can add extra details later. And now I'm going to go to the chocolate chips here. Okay. So I'm going to go and swatch directly and use um, the burnt umber with the brown oak. Oh, let's, let's check. Okay. Maybe I want to use the brown ochre because it's like a sinfully deep brown. Okay, looks good. So I'll I'll use this so there's more contrast. Okay, so since I can't see my sketch anymore, I'm just gonna like make guesses like, oh, looks like it's here. Okay. Then another one here. Usually when I, I bake with, with chocolate chips and such, I like to use the, the bittersweet um, kind of chocolate. Sometimes I find the regular um, chocolate chips too sweet. 
so I like I like the bittersweet it's still sweet but just you know the right amount of sweetness for me okay so I'm just weighing it I'm just really guessing oh, I it's uh, thereabouts so again don't stress just uh, try to enjoy it instead anyway you can always do another version later on if you're really not happy then it will be good practice okay. you can also try to uh, practice it first if you want in a smaller paper or in your sketchbook so it's um, it's good to have your own sketchbook where you can sketch daily it's a good habit to to have you don't even need to spend so much time just 20 to 30 minutes of just sketching it will be really great for your um, improvement Okay, so that's it for now. Okay. So I think it's uh, starting to look like food. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but yeah. I think uh, it's starting to look like it's something that you would eat. Okay, so I'm gonna darken the shadows here a bit inside. Because this is where it meets the the other um, muffin right beside it, so there would be more shadows. Okay, now I'm going to add extra here. So I'm going to add some some of this dark brown, this brown ochre with the with the purple. Okay, remember the purple that we had earlier. So I'm going to mix some brown ochre to that just to create a deeper, even deeper purple. Okay, and then go over this roughly. To add um, deeper shadows here and there okay so whenever you need um, a white highlight um, either you paint around the, that the, pap the paper and keep that white or you can use um, a white gouache or white acrylic or um, some use um, pens for that after and then you can create a highlight okay so um, now I'm gonna go and do this okay I'm gonna add extra extra brown okay just around the edges make it darker just so it doesn't look too flat Okay, so don't worry about it. Um, if you feel like you're tired or you're not going anywhere that you like, uh, take a break. Okay, so it's important to um, also take breaks, stop, and look at your work from a distance. Okay, with fresh eyes, you'll you'll see um, that you know you're looking for something specific that you're not getting now, but you might see better later with fresher eyes. So just take breaks okay you also need to rest your eyes and um, your mind
Okay. So uh, I'm going to wait for everything to dry and then add the highlights. For now, I'm going to add the, the surface. Okay, so I'm going to use um, French Ultramarine washed, like a light wash. Okay. Let's, let's first make sure our brush is clean so it doesn't affect the mixture. Because I've been using yellows, and if I mix that with blue, I'm going to be making a messy green. Okay, so I'm um, using French Ultramarine. I like to use this for um, like soft shadows because it creates just like a cool shadowing. Okay, so... So I'm just going to keep this light and soft. Okay. And then I'm just going to fade it out, blend it out. So just a uh, simple shadowing. Okay, I'm gonna just deepen it here near the, the cupcakes where most of the shadowing will be. So it's wet, so it's just gonna spread naturally. So I like to use the wet and wet for um, shadowing like this. So it's just a soft, soft kind of shadow. Okay, so that's uh, I'm happy with that. Let's keep it at that. Sometimes I just have to stop myself because I might just, you know, keep overworking it. Okay, and then, um, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to add um, extra highlights, then you can use gouache. In my case, um, let's try it with um, titanium white. And I'm going to use... Um, this brush from our fine line detail set. So this is uh, number one round, very sharp and pointy and fine brush for fine details. So I'm gonna put some here, some white, just a little bit because you just need a bit because it's gonna be opaque. Okay, so you can use that to create um, so I actually touch this. So let's fix that. Okay, so you can use this to create the highlights, which I will be using for the the raisins. So here and there, I'm going to add like white touches. So it's actually still a little bit wet in some parts, so I'm going to try to avoid that. Okay. So it's going to look like there's some shine here and there. Okay, so again, you can you can just paint around this if you have that sort of patience, or you can just do it as a last step. Okay, and I'm going to be doing the same with the chocolate chip. 
nothing. So just some shine here and there. So the fine line is perfect for this. It has a really pointy, nice pointy tip. So you can control your, your fine details better. Okay. So um, these are my muffins. Okay. I'm, I'm going to wait for everything to settle and then I'm going to check back um, later if um, I see more things that I need to work on but for now um, this is like the major major work done okay so I hope you learned something for me today that's a pretty long one but I didn't want to um, hurry the the layering so I hope you learned um, how to paint muffins you can actually use this also for cupcakes they're pretty near each other so I'm gonna switch my camera back up now to my face so I can there okay and I'm gonna zoom out as well right so um, today we learned how to yes um, I used acrylic so I used a titanium white acrylic but you can also some prefer to use gouache but I, I also use acrylic so um, you can use that to create the highlights but just be careful because of course um, with acrylic after it dries you can't really um you know touch it anymore it's dry so if you're um more concerned about that it's better to use gouache because at least with gouache you can still um uh, you know work on it later on even if it's dry okay so today we did our muffins okay so um, later on i'm still probably gonna see and nitpick and um, look if i need to add some more details somewhere but you can also use a different shadowing if you want okay so um, just play around with it and enjoy the process okay that's very important uh, be patient with yourself I'll try to enjoy the process okay and um, again I'm gonna share the link to the watercolor guide that we have so please um, check it out okay it's a uh, Personally, it's uh, we really worked on that. It's really great, and uh, you, it will guide you on color mixes and how to create uh, colors, how to create bright greens, beauty greens. Okay, so uh, you will find all the details there, and I hope you'll find it useful too. So, watercolor muffins and um, the prompt today is memory. So, if you also want to work on something another kind of memory that um, it's more specific to you to your experience then please go ahead and don't forget to share your works with us okay so that's it for today and i'll hope i hope to see you next time and every day we have um something so there's a, a word prompt for each day and uh, please join the others as well okay thank you and bye